Coach Norvell talked about getting the offense in a better rhythm after the game. I know you've talked about it a week or so ago. What are things that you think you can do better, uh, Coach Norvell could do better, and getting the guys in position to, to get in a rhythm early in games? I think, for one, the opening drives. You know, we've hurt ourselves in opening drives, whether that's with penalties or last week, you know, we had two productive plays, second one's a turnover. So we got to start faster. Uh, so for, for us, especially in the running game, uh, this last week we struggled a little bit with direct runs. So we got to get a little more, uh, I don't want to say trickiness, because that's not what we're about. Uh, we, we still need to be able to run the ball at people, but we need to be a little more creative offensively to try to create some explosive runs and some spark runs uh, earlier in games like we did, like we had some of those creative misdirection runs in the second half, which were productive runs. So we got to do that earlier in games uh, as an offensive staff, starting with myself. Hey, Kenny, good afternoon. How you doing? Good. Uh, I want to ask you about you guys, it seemed like you had a plan to switch quarterbacks early in the game uh, for the first couple series. Is that still something you guys want to implement in this offense? Is it maybe you go back to the drawing board and look, maybe stick with one guy? What's the thought process there and going back and forth with the QBs? Well, they both have a unique skill set. You know, they're, they're both different players and they both add, add value uh, when they're on the field. So we did have a plan uh, early to kind of go drive, drive, and then kind of roll with uh, the hot hand from there. And uh, yeah, that's something we're going to continue to evaluate, continue to, to work through. Uh, obviously, Jordan's availability the last few weeks has been kind of throughout practice. So uh, we'll see how that goes this week, because that will have an effect on, uh, on obviously that thought process. And obviously, you guys are not satisfied with what's going on with short yardage. You guys, I know you work on a lot of that in practice, those situations, but obviously it's, it's not working well, and that, it kills drives for you guys. What, do you, what can you do to try to rectify that issue? Is it, is it personnel changes? Is it changing play calling? What's at the bottom of that? I think just understanding who we, who we are. I mean, you, you look at week one, and we were successful in that situation. You know, we've had some injuries, some guys dinged up, and that's, that's – kind of change the course of of kind of who we are offensively and I don't think I've done a good job adapting to that personnel to that personnel change week one to week three and uh, obviously two weeks in a row being absolutely probably the worst in the country at third and one fourth and one to two which is where we're probably at we've always been a team that is a direct run and we're going to run the ball at you not around you and that's been our success and that's been one of our strengths as an offense dating back to Arizona State uh, for eight straight years that's something the last two weeks that has been a struggle and uh, we're going to have to adapt our plan around uh, the guys that are on the football field and we're going to have to do a better job as a staff starting with myself uh, to put our guys in a position for them to succeed, uh, not just things that we've done in the past that have been successful. When Jordan is um, in the game, are, are teams doing anything differently to, to take away his running ability, or is, is it just not come out of the flow of the game? Uh, obviously, week one, there was different plans uh, for, both, for both guys, and you could, you could see that. Uh, you know, when McKenzie hit the field versus when Jordan was on the field week one. Uh, week two, Jordan was on the field so limited. Uh, we really didn't get to, to see what a specific plan was in week two. And week three, um, there was a very minor change to what they did, but I would say it was about 70, 30, 70 the same, 30%. They played a little more cover two into the boundary when Jordan was in, obviously trying to keep zone eyes on him that would, to prevent the scrambles. Uh, but for the, I would say 70, 30, it was the same as uh, how they played uh, uh, McKenzie. Okay, if you can walk us through, I know you guys script a ton of plays ahead of time before even going into the game, but what is the, the workflow with you in the booth, Mike down on the sidelines, what it would like play calling, how does that all play itself out each week? Well, every week we go in, we get a first nine together, uh, which is basically, it's a sequenced first nine that you only get off the first nine uh, unless there's a uh, outstanding circumstance, like a second and 17, a third and a third down in some capacity and then which we go to our sequence third down calls which we have an order of which third down calls we like based off third and one to two what our top call is third and four to six third and seven and eight so I would say especially early in games uh, 
and going starting the second half, so we're, we're very scripted in terms of exactly how we want to attack a defense uh, and what those calls are going to be. Uh, so me and coach communicate. There's a, I mean, we've been working together for a long time. I mean, there's, it's really just status quo from that standpoint. But at the end of the day, I mean, every, everything's a reflection of myself. And I've got to find a way to score points. I've got to find a way to help our guys, put them in a better position to score points, and find a way for us to stay out of our own way. Because we didn't get penalties this week, but we had five turnovers, well, technically six, but I don't count a Hail Mary. But five turnovers in a football game, um, you, you, that's just, that's not a recipe for success. Um, 52 plays is not a recipe for success. I mean, when you have four drives uh, that last two plays or less, one play touchdown, two first play turnovers, second play turnover, you're really playing a game in a, a, nine, a nine drive game. Uh, when you have a nine drive game, you're really playing two and a half quarters of football offensively in that situation. And then you don't score when you get down to the one yard line. All those little things add up to 14 points in a football game, which is unacceptable. McKenzie hasn't had a lot of failure on a football field um, really in his life, probably. Um, how's he handling this? And, uh, you know, especially a game like that where he was credited with a lot of those turnovers. Yeah, uh, he's competing. I mean, I think that's, the, that's the, 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 the best thing. And I told our guys yesterday is we're all in this together to compete to be the very best we can be. All right? There's no hanging your heads. There's no woo is me. Who cares what everybody says? We're going to do whatever we can to be the very best we can be. And how do we do that? We all take care of ourselves. We all show up every day and we try to get a little bit better and a little bit better. If you worry about what's happened in the past, if you worry about what people are telling you, if you're, if you're sad every day because of how we started, I mean, I feel bad for you in the real world because when that thing hits you, well, welcome to it, right? You got to find a way and our guys eventually, the work we're putting in, Right, it's like the old bamboo saying, right? The work you're putting in, you don't know it's growing roots, and then all of a sudden it spurts 90 feet, right? We don't know when that 90 feet's gonna happen. And I keep telling them, I wish it happened last week. I wish it happened week one. I don't know. But if we keep putting in the work, eventually that bamboo tree is gonna start growing. And that's our challenge is not many people are gonna stay true to the process when bad things happen. Not everybody just wants to jump ship and change, right? There is no change. There's a recipe for success that's hard work. That doesn't mean you're gonna be successful. It just means it's the recipe. Eventually, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but the hard work's gonna pay off and the tree's gonna start sprouting. And that's the message to the guys and the practice we had yesterday was one of the best Sunday practices since we've been there. And that doesn't guarantee success, but it guarantees that we're getting better and it may not show up every day, but it shows up for us in practice. And eventually, these kids, these players, are going to reap what they sow. And I hope it happens for them sooner rather than later. Not having a Maurice Saturday, obviously, it made. I know Darius went in the game as the backup center, and then when Baby on briefly goes down, he has to move inside, and there's so much shuffling everywhere, and I'm sure that makes things real tough. Is there a thought to maybe finding someone else who could be that backup center so that if God forbid something happened to Baby on again. They kind of don't have to have all that shuffle in there. Yeah, I mean, yes, that would be awesome. Uh, but the best, the best situation for us is is to is for that transition to happen based off personnel uh, right now. Obviously, it would be awesome, and we had that situation going into the year, having Mo and having Baby on be able to step in and not have to slide people around. That's an ideal situation. But uh, you know. You don't always have that, those luxuries in football, and part of the game is staying healthy and availability. And uh, you know, we gotta, if we don't get healthy, we gotta do a better job as a staff, utilizing the skill sets of the people on the field and not asking them to do what they struggle at, asking them to do things that they can succeed at. And that's something that, that I've gotta do a better job of. With that in mind, Kenny, I know there've been a lot of injuries, personnel changes, whatnot. What are the things that you think you guys do well on offense, the things you can build on and continue to, to grow on moving forward? I, th I think offensively, we, when we know what to do, right, I think we can run gap schemes. I think we're, we're efficient uh, in the gap schemes. I think we're good on the perimeter, uh, perimeter blocking. I think the, the naked game is something that has been a positive for us. Uh, but in all, I wouldn't say right now I don't think we have an identity. I think with all the shuffling of, of injuries or quarterbacks slash offensive line shuffling, uh, 
I don't think we've established a true identity of what are we good at because every week it could be something else. One week we are a lead at third and one to two. We line up in the Wildcat and score versus Notre Dame. The next week we line up in the Wildcat versus Jacksonville State, go 0 for 4, right? So the, that question's what we're figuring out is what is our identity, what are our strengths, and that could change week by week based off availability of guys. And we've got to do a good job, like I said multiple times, I got to do a better job of saying, okay, we think these two guys are going to come back for the game. So we think the plan is based around these two guys. Well, they don't come back. All right, what can we do if they're not in? Because that's a completely different game plan with them not in. And how do we prepare for both with our guys? And that was something that, uh, that caught us this last week was the plan versus the people. And we had a good plan, but when the people changed, we needed to adjust our plan. And um, I didn't do a good, good enough job of adjusting that, especially in those third and short situations. Um, it seemed like it didn't seem like Wake Forest was necessarily like selling out to stop the run, especially when you guys run a lot of four or five wide. They only had like six, six in the in the box. Um, did you guys feel like you went away from the run because of score and getting behind, or or were there more opportunities to to run the ball? No, we just struggled. In all reality, we struggled blocking them. You know, our explosive runs were off miskeyed tosses in which it's just a perimeter toss play. You know, we struggled just blocking them. We struggled with a little bit of the movement uh, up front, going from threes to two eyes, from two eyes to threes, uh, which is a guy inside the guard spiking out or a guy outside the guard spiking in. Uh, we just struggled with a little bit of the movement, but you're exactly right. I mean, they, they, they blitzed us two times in the football game on base downs. They lined up, they played man free, and they said, man to man, play ball. So we got to, like I said, we got to do a better job as a staff helping our guys win those matchups, helping our guys when they get into those situations, uh, scheming up more free plays in which where we don't have to always win, in which a lot of those explosive runs we had in the game were, were of that category, were of influence pitches and, and stuff like that. So we got to do a better job of helping our guys when they get put into the, the plain and simple, it's man free, it's a one-on-one -on -one game. I got to do a better job of helping our guys. In that vein, then, do quarterbacks have to be more confident in throwing one-on-one -on -one situations with receivers? Are they open? They're not seeing it? And, and how much of it is just simple confidence and, and being able to win your, your matchup one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, I mean, when teams play like that, it's exactly what you said. It comes down to one-on-ones, whether that's one-on-ones in the box, when teams just line up and play man-free. Uh, it's one-on-ones in the box. It's one-on-ones in the perimeter. Uh, but it goes back to if, if we aren't consistently going to, you know, win those, I've got to do a better job of helping our guys win those, whether it's leverages, creating stacks, creating bunches, motioning to help our guys with leverages, creating more pick routes, uh, more influence runs so we don't have to win at the point of attack as much. Uh, whatever those schemes are that week, uh, if we are struggling, I've got to put together a better plan uh, to help our guys. And I think that too many times throughout the football game, I just said go win, and I didn't help our guys and put them in the best position to be successful uh, because that team honestly didn't show to play man free. They were about an 8% man free team going into that game. You know, everything they showed was quarters and pressure three under three deep, four under three deep, and they were a pressure zone team basically his entire career. That's what that system is. Started with Mike Elko. When Mike Elko was there before he went to Notre Dame, same thing Clark, ran, Clark Lee ran at Notre Dame. That is a soft cover four slash cover three pressure defense that lined up and played man free. So it was, a, it was an adjustment and uh, we didn't have enough, enough things to help our guys versus man free in the run game and the pass game uh, to be successful. Uh, Coach, I know it's, it has to do with uh, injuries, but you're trying to prepare a plan A and a plan B in a 20-hour time frame. It's a challenge. Can you just keep it simple, stupid, you know, kind of thing and reduce the amount of stuff you're trying to give the players? Yeah, I, I would agree. That would Simple, stupid is I'm with you. And we were uh, – I agree. Get everybody on the same page, but with that, there's a lack of being able to help, 
right? It goes back to that conversation we just had. It's that balance of, are we going to be simple, stupid, and everybody going to be on the same page and go execute versus are we going to be simple, stupid? Well, then we're not going to be able to help our guys as much uh, win leverages. We're not going to be able to scheme up as, as much not necessarily man beaters, but schemed open guys if we keep it like that, especially with the drastic change we've seen defenses play us as opposed to play their opponents uh, the, the, the last few weeks. So I think there is a balance of that, especially with, you know, when you're up front. But I also think you have to put together the plan for what you think is going to be available to put your guys in the best position to be successful. Uh, and that's what we did last week, and unfortunately, you know, uh, didn't work out. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you all. You all have a good day.